been a while since our last melee tier list, and with some huge changes in the recent patch, the meta has been completely shaken up. You might already have a prediction for what we think is the best melee in the game, but can you guess some of our sleeper OP picks? In today's video, we'll be going over the newest melee tier list, letting you know which melee kings reign supreme, and which specs should probably stick to roleplaying for now. But first, we have a question for all of you. With Season 1 coming to a close in a few months, what melee spec do you think needs a complete overhaul in the next patch. We've already previewed some of the new rogue PvP talents in 9.1, but which other melee DPS do you think need to be reworked entirely? Let us know in the comments below. And when 9.1 hits, look no further than skillcap.com slash wow to bring you up to speed on everything you need to know for the new meta. Our website features class guides and matchup breakdowns designed by some of the best players in the world. Our videos teach you everything you need to know to improve your skill and rating in Arena, and and feature high-level commentary that you won't find anywhere else. So, if you want to stay ahead of the competition, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow today. So, the biggest general change since our last update was a buff to the Necro Lord Covenant. Fleshcraft received a major rework and absorbs significantly more damage than it did earlier on in the season. This was a passive buff to Assassination Rogues, who have Necro Lord as their primary covenant. With this buff, Assassination is able to play more aggressively in Arena, since it has more passive durability. Nowhere is this more impactful than in 2v2, where Assassination is one of the best specs in the game. But if we take a look at a snapshot of the meta in 3v3, Assassination has yet to take off as a dominant spec. Currently, the 3v3 ladder is dominated by a few different comp archetypes. Jungle Cleave, RMP, Arms Warriors, and Fire Mages dictate a lot of the meta. So, the strength of any class in Arena is determined by how well it does into those Arena Gatekeepers. So, this time around, we can confidently say that there is one spec that is simply god tier status, and it should come as no surprise by now that Arms Warriors are in complete control of the melee meta. They did not receive any significant nerfs in the recent patch, and instead, some of their legendary options were actually buffed. Still, their dominance comes from their incredibly dynamic defensive toolkit, which allows them to play with almost any other class in the game. They currently do well in different comp archetypes, pairing well with Fire Mages for a more control-based setup, or with melee DPS, like Rep Paladins and Enhancement Shamans for a more pressure-oriented playstyle. This allows them to do well into the other meta gatekeepers, having the tools necessary to deny setups and win conditions from popular comps like RMP, while also having enough attrition to outpressure Disc Priest healing against Jungle Cleat. All in all, Warriors are one of the safest picks you can make in Arena. Moving on to the S tier, there is one thing in common between every spec in this section, so let's see if you can figure that out. Starting off with the S tier are Rep Paladins, who received some minor changes in the recent patch. The Ringing Clarity Conduit was nerfed slightly, making their infamous one-shot combo less threatening by a bit. But as compensation, their final Verdict Legendary was buffed by 15%, which put it as the primary legendary option for Rhett Paladins in the second half of Season 1. The role of Rhett in the current meta is rather unique in that they're capable of solo carrying the game at lower ratings by doing ridiculous burst damage that seemingly cannot be countered, but as Rhett start to climb toward the top of the ladder, opponents become better and Rhett's shift to being less of a carry spec and more of a support spec where they require the tools of classes like warriors and mages to create win conditions for them. Ultimately though, Rhett Paladins are required to incorporate a mix of both carry and support in their gameplay, with Rhett being both responsible for scoring kills with well-executed bursts and keeping themselves and their team alive with their abundance of team utility. Enhancement is in a similar situation, having great team utility options that allow them to fill a support role for their team. The most recent patch gave them some damage increases to Lava Lash and a buff to one of their legendaries called Legacy of the Frost Witch. This buff was enough to give them an alternative to their Doomwinds legendary and gives them more consistent damage. As mentioned, their role in the meta is mostly as a support class. Their best comp is Turbo Cleave, which does really well on the ladder due to its incredibly forgiving defensive options. The toolkit of Arms Warriors combined with the off healing and disruption of an Enhanced Shaman, elevate the comp to top tier status, and make it one of the most demanding execution tests in Arena. If you fail to cross CC properly against Turbo Cleave, you will have your entire kill attempt shut down, so this comp is a good check on many lower tier teams. And finally, rounding out the S tier are Feral Druids, meaning that the entire S tier is currently hybrid melee. If Enhanced Shaman is the spec to elevate Arms Warriors, then Feral is the spec to elevate BM Hunters. And with some of the recent changes to Necrolord in the recent patch, Ferals have adapted a 
completely different playstyle. The buffs to Adaptive Swarm make Feral Bleed Damage incredibly threatening, which works incredibly well with their hit and run playstyle. They focus mostly on keeping bleeds on the kill target while ducking away to either off heal or CC. When paired with the consistent damage of a hunter, Jungle Cleave poses a huge threat to players climbing the 3v3 ladder. This comp is especially demanding from a healer point of view, requiring really good defensive rotation and resource management to have any hope of surviving. And with the S tier out of the way, we move on to the A tiers, with some specs being on the cusp of being truly OP. Although they didn't receive any major changes in the recent patch, Frost DKs are arguably the best melee DPS on the A tier. One reason for their consistent dominance is the sheer amount of passive control that they have in Arena. Heartstop Aura and Chains of Ice allow DKs to completely slow down the pace of the game, making setups more difficult for comps like RMP and being able to snare melee DPS with a ranged slow. One of their biggest team contributions is Anti-Magic Zone, which is incredibly valuable right now due to how popular Fire Mages are. We should note that Heartstop Aura is getting removed in patch 9.1, so it is possible that we'll see DKs drop a bit on our tier list. For the meantime though, their ability to dictate the pace of the game combined with their strong burst damage keeps them on the A tier for now. Next up, one of the biggest changes since our last update is the drop in Windwalker Monks from S to A tier. And although they received some bug fixes along with a buff to one of their legendaries, Windwalker have taken a slight fall from grace and are now in A tier melee. The things that make them strong are still the same, and now their burst damage is even more threatening with the buff to Zuen's battle gear. Against cloth and leather teams, they generally play this legendary along with Serenity, giving them huge burst damage with other CD stacking. Unfortunately, they aren't good enough to carry games on their own. Lacking strong off healing and team utility, they're forced into playing with either fire mages to cover their survivability or frost DKs to elevate their burst damage. Moving on, sub rogues have remained in an admittedly awkward position this entire season. Suffering some huge nerfs early on into the expansion, sub hasn't seen any major changes since, with the exception of a buff to the Venthyr Covenant ability. This has forced sub rogues to shadow dance between covenants and has even developed into a new playstyle entirely, giving up consistent damage for a huge one dance build. Their relatively weak passive damage mitigation has forced them into playing RMP, which complements their hit and run type strategy perfectly. Rogue Mage continues to do well all across the ladder and is one of the few comps that actually does well into jungle, despite it being a difficult matchup. It is hard to say whether or not sub rogues will have more comp options next season, but for now they remain on our A tier due to their control and burst being held down by an incredibly linear playstyle. Finally, rounding out the A tier is the dark horse of melee DPS in Season 1, and that is Assassination Rogues. Coming off some huge buffs to Necrolord, Assassination found their footing in the metagame as they gained some additional passive survivability from things like Fleshcraft and Ooze's Frictionless Coating. The Necrolord Covenant has opened up a more aggressive playstyle, allowing them to stay in and pressure enemy targets instead of needing to constantly reset like their sub counterparts. This goes hand in hand with some of the other passive buffs they received in the patch, along with a buff to their Doomblade Legendary. No Nowhere are the strengths of assassination more obvious than in 2v2, where they excel with Resto Druids and Holy Priests. When it comes to 3v3, they have a really solid position into some off-meta comps like RPS and RMD, though they are not as well represented on the highest ratings of the ladder. They shouldn't deter you from playing the spec though, as they are looking really promising next patch. Moving on to the lower tiers of our list, we will look at some specs that have some major weaknesses holding them back from high tier status. The first of these mid-tiers is Demon Hunter, which have remained on the B tier since our last update. Although they received a minor buff to their burst damage in the last patch, their weak passive defense is what continues to hold them back. They actually do really well into setup-based comps, being able to deny huge damage setups with their auto-proc darkness and the ability to reverse CC on their healers. This comes with their unmatched mobility and 20% damage reduction to magic damage, making them a nightmare for caster DPS. They struggle hardest against consistent damage, with comps like Turbo Cleave simply out-pressuring them while having more passive tankiness and team-wide healing. Without passive damage reduction against melee, demon hunters are pretty squishy and lose the attrition war against high throughput teams. And moving down from A tier on our last ranking, we have survival hunters. While they are certainly not bad on their own, their relative weakness compared to BM makes them less desirable in the current meta. If you saw our recent ranged DPS tier list update, you should know that BM is one of the god classes in the game during this mid-season. And although survival does really well in 2v2, this comparative weakness makes them less meta friendly in 3v3. And unfortunately, rounding out the remainder of our tier list are the low tiers, who are simply not strong enough on their own to do well in the meta, and sometimes even hold other classes back. 
Although being reworked in 9.1, Outlaw Rogue has failed to find itself even in the mid tier of melee so far this expansion, being held back by its relatively weak damage when compared to sub and assassination. Unholy DK is in a similar situation, just being a much weaker option when compared to Frost, though having decent success in 2v2 where its shortcomings can be overcome in a more controlled environment. And that leaves us with Fury Warrior, who will also be getting another overhaul next patch. While they have a similar defensive toolkit to Arms Warriors and even some incredible burst damage, the lack of a Mortal Strike effect is what has held them back so far in Season 1. So once again, the state of the meta is currently being directed by a few DPS juggernauts. Arms Warriors, BM Hunters, and Fire Mages represent the majority of successful comps in the game. So in order to be a good melee at this point into the season, you need to have the ability to deal with these gods of WoW PvP. In order to be a good melee spec in the meta, you need to have really good damage on top of either passive survivability, control, off healing, or team utility. Personally, I think that assassination rogues continue to be heavily slept on this season. On paper, they seem to have a lot of the things necessary to be a really solid spec, but there hasn't been much experimentation in high level 3v3. With that in mind, is there some spec that you think deserves to be higher on our tier list? Let us know in the comments below. So with patch 9.1 a few months away, we'll likely see a huge change in our melee tier list. For now, arms warriors and hybrids reign supreme. But will we see a rise in the outlaw rogues and the fury warriors next season? Only time will tell. Once again, when the patch goes live, we'll give you an update on all of our tier lists as we start and see the new meta progress. For now though, you can be confident that our list won't change for the rest of the season. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like. And if you want to stay up to date on any further changes, be sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications. That way you'll never miss an upload. As always, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.